What's up everyone and welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about open office vulnerabilities that allow remote code execution. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. Apache OpenOffice is currently vulnerable to a remote code execution vulnerability. And while the app's source code has been patched, the fix has only been made available as beta software and awaits an official release. That means that most people running the OpenOffice suite, which has been downloaded hundreds of millions of times and was last updated in May, probably have vulnerable versions of the software. On Saturday, September 18th, security researcher Eugene Lim revealed details about the vulnerability at CVE 2021-33035 at HackerOne's Hacktivity online conference after an August 30th public disclosure date came and went without the fix being fully deployed. Lim, known only or known online as Space Raccoon, is a vulnerability researcher at GovTech Singapore Cybersecurity Group. CVE 2021-33035, he explained, is a buffer overflow by a .dbf file which overrides a return pointer with a, D with a DEP or data execution prevention and ASLR address space layout randomization bypass to finally execute arbitrary commands by the attacker. So a malicious file opened by the software can execute malware on the machine. Lim found the flaw after examining the .dbf file format, which first appeared as part of the dbase2 application way back, way back in 1983, and setting up a template to fuzz the format, inject data into the stack in the hope of causing a crash. What he found was that the .dbf file format can use one of two values in its header, field length or field type, to determine the buffer size of a database record. So it's possible to allocate a buffer using one and to use the other to set the size of a copy operation into that buffer, leading to a buffer overflow. OpenOffice's .dbf parsing code looked like this. Else if data type integer equals n type sal int uh, 32 n value to zero mem copy n value p data n length now in the screenshot we can see a buffer n value of size sal int 32 which is four bytes being instantiated for a field of type integer next mem copy copies a buffer of size n, n, n length which is an attack attacker control value. It copies that into n value without validating that n length is smaller than or equal to four bytes. Revising his previous payload generator to the integer field type, he increased the size of field length to greater than the sal in 32 four bytes and was able to launch a proof of concept attack that consisted of opening the file in op an open office calc and causing a crash. Back season. To fully exploit this and achieve reliable code execution on Windows at least, Lim had to bypass DEP and ASLR. <clears throat> to do so, he looked for imported modules that had not been compiled with these protections and found LibXML2, a software library for parsing XML documents. So this library could be used as a starting point for a return-oriented programming chain, or ROP chain, in order to bypass DEP eventually. ROP, as Lim explained, is a technique that chains together snippets of code that resides within an application's memory, like cutting out letters from newspapers and magazines to spell out a sentence. But in this case, it's lining up software instructions to execute, until a specific goal has been accomplished. Because the overwritten pointer he'd obtained offered only about 256 bytes to work with, his ROP chain became get module handle A and then get proc address to locate the win execute code to execute his own shell commands. At this point, he can run whatever he wants on the victim's machine. Lim, in his post, said that he wondered why this hadn't been caught. And then, aha, he noticed that GitHub's LGTM automated security scan for open source project has Apache OpenOffice tagged for Python and JavaScript, but not C++. Browsing the files on LGTM, I noticed that there were no C++ files included, he observed. This demonstrates the importance of sanity checking automated static analysis tools 
if your tools don't know the code exists, it can't find these vulnerabilities. Lim said that the vulnerability also affects Scalabium, DBase Viewer, a CVE 2021-35297, and because that project was won by a single developer, the fix was quick. With Apache OpenOffice, which has struggled to sustain itself in recent years, the initial disclosure occurred on May 4th, and with any luck, the fix will be finalized before the end of September. So, what did we learn? Well, if you're using OpenOffice, be very careful when opening documents, especially from people you don't know or documents you may not even be expecting because they might be malicious. Uh, this, again, this fix is only in beta, so it's not rolled out to the production version of OpenOffice, which means many of the hundreds of millions of downloads and installs um, right now are vulnerable, which also means guaranteed people are going to start using that in phishing attacks, yada, yada, yada. So be careful, keep your eyes open, stay awake when you're checking your email if you're using open office documents. Now, additionally, as Mr. Lim noted, we have to review our processes on a regular basis. In this case, it would be the static code analysis process to ensure that as our projects continue to grow, you know, we're adding new features, we're adding new libraries, we're adding all of these new things. As our project grows, we are covering all languages and code types within our static code analysis. So with that, I say thanks, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Hey.